there's definitely patterns in in what bases fly where. So for example, from Travis Air Force Base, that's where you're going to see the most flights to Hawaii and the Pacific East Coast bases. There's some they you know that go up and down the East Coast or within the states, but that's also the best place to catch hops to Europe. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Uniforms. Today we have Stephanie um, from Poppin' Smoke. She's um, she travels a lot using military benefits, and that's what we're going to bring you on today's episode. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for taking some time off and joining us today. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, of course. Um, you actually just got back from travel. From was that right? We, I actually am still in the States unexpectedly. So I was, oh. uh, we were here, we usually spend the summers here. We live in Spain, um, but I'll oh. go back probably next month as it turns oh. out instead of uh, at the end of August. Nice. Awesome. Well, we definitely would love to hear a little bit about that. Uh, but before we get all into all of that, um, yeah, just share a little bit about what you do. You know, your, uh, your husband is a, is a retired, you know, he's a veteran. So yeah, just share a little bit about your service, your experience in the military and kind of how we got into what we're doing, what you're doing now. Sure. So my husband retired in 2015. He was in the army and we got married about four years before he retired. And so, you know, periodically that was, I had never flown space A or used most of the travel related benefits, but he would often talk about how sometimes he would just take a getaway, for example, from the DC area, he would go down to the beach cottages down in Virginia beach, just for a little getaway for himself. Uh, and then we started uh, using facilities in Annapolis and so on. So I was pretty excited when I started learning about some of the military benefits that were available. And I think his dad was in the army for 30 years and he was in for 30 years. And so it was all just kind of the usual like stuff, you know, but yeah. it was new to me. And so when I would hear about it, I, I would say, wow, so you can visit these facilities all over the world and, and they have golf courses and marinas and you can take scuba diving and there's beachfront facilities and so on. I'm like, it's kind of like belonging to a country club worldwide or something. <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering why more people didn't talk about and use these things. And so we, when he retired, I convinced him to take what was supposed to be a gap year uh, for, mm -hmm. for just, we were just going to take a year off and travel just seemed like a good time. And long story short, that that kind of turned into a much, that was in 2015, and we didn't really go back to a regular life, but a big component of that was flying Space A. And this was before I started Pop and Smoke. Um, we flew all over the world using Space A, and I found that so many people from the military community that I talked to either hadn't heard of it or they'd only heard bad things. They heard that it's, you know, you wait around too long, the flights are canceled all the time, and Oh, the planes break down and so on. But of mm -hmm. course, all those things happen with civilian airlines if you've flown lightly. Sure. So uh, that was just basically I started Pop and Smoke because I wanted to help members of our community learn how to use the benefits they've earned. And it's not just the space safe flights, it's the lodging on bases, it's the military recreational facilities, it's even MWR, you know, like mm -hmm. a, on, the, on your local base, being able to uh, join their outdoor rec trips or use rent boats at their marina or use the golf course, all those things. It's re really, they're really fantastic benefits. Yeah, definitely. And you're right. Um, there was a lot of military members that I talked to that, that don't know about these benefits. And I had briefly heard about them when I was in, I never got to take advantage of any of those services. Um, mm -hmm. although I wanted to, um, and, but like you said, there are so many different things that yeah. you are, you know, that you're given, I guess, I don't say entitled, mm -hmm. but you're given these, these benefits and, you know, whether, like you said, it's traveling or recreation or lodging or whatever it is. Um, and you mentioned, obviously the, the biggest thing that we heard what, when I was, um, when I was trying to do it was that there, it was really confusing, like you said, mm -hmm. and there's a process and it's not easy to get on the process. So, um, right. For, for anybody who might be not too familiar with this, um, like you like you said perfectly, it is a benefit that we get. Now, let me ask you, do you have to be, can you be separated? Do you have to be retired? Do you have to be a certain disabled percentage? Do you, do you know mm -hmm. about any of that info? 
Sure. Yes. And that's an excellent question because the there's different eligibility. So for obviously for active duty and dependents, that's of course they're eligible. But once for veterans, retirees are eligible and they can fly anywhere that the they can fly anywhere in the world unless a particular location has its own restrictions. But um 100% disabled veterans, and it has to be a permanent and total disability. They are also eligible to fly Space Day, but only to and from U.S. states and territories, so not to any foreign countries. And there's no exceptions to that rule. I, people sometimes ask, well, what if we take the rotator or something like that? And unfortunately, no, there is no exception. Um, and then veterans who are not retired and also not 100% disabled are not eligible to fly Space Day. They're basically, if you have any service-connected disability, though, you know, all of the other benefits are available to you. And then I'll mention one other group, two uh, surviving spouses of mm. either uh, service members who died while on active duty or while retired. Those surviving spouses are eligible to travel just within the lower 48 states. Nice. And what about, um, what about family, like your wife, husband, kids? Can sure. they go along with you? Yes, if anyone who is your dependent, like they have a valid military ID still. So um, it's, you know, a, I've actually heard of situations where someone's parent has become their dependent in Deers, but normally it's not your, you know, it's not your parents. My mom would love to fly space day with us, but unfortunately yeah. she, she is not eligible. But uh, <laughs> okay. your kids, your spouse, um, for anyone who is no longer in the military, any of the retirees or the 100% disabled veterans, the dependents must be with their sponsor to fly space. Gotcha. Um, now, if, if you do qualify and somebody was interested in looking into doing this, um, can you kind of give us like a like an overview? Like, how does it like do you have to go to a base? Is there an online place that you go to? And obviously, mm -hmm. we'll we'll send people to your website here afterwards so mm -hmm. they can check out because you have a you have a lot of resources on your site. Um, yes, but in order to get this process going, if they're eligible, how do you, how do you even get this started? The first thing I would say is really just get a big, get the big picture of how the overall process works. And it's, it, it is a lot of reading and sometimes people feel overwhelmed, but I think that you really just have to understand what Space A is. First thing to know is that with Space A flights are military missions. So in most cases, they're between two U.S. military bases around the world. There are some exceptions you can see uh, flights just about to just about anywhere, just based on the needs, the mission needs. But most of them are either between two military bases, or in the case of the Patriot Express, also known as the Rotator, there are uh, passenger terminals at Seattle Airport and Baltimore Washington Airport. So in most cases, the schedule for the flights is not available until 72 hours in advance. So that, wow. that in itself uh, is quite different from regular commercial travel. The rotators, AK, the Patriot Express, those schedules are available for 30 calendar days, but that's the only flight that you'd have any advance knowledge for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, and then of course the seat releases and the actual show times are not available even for the Patriot Express until 72 hours. Wow. So people need to understand that you're, you're fitting in to the needs of a military mission. Yeah. So you are not the priority, you're effectively <laughs> cargo. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, and so I think that's the part that people need to understand, you know, cause it can be frustrating because at one minute they needed to deliver some equipment to one location and the mission changed and they need to do it later or they're gonna bring it somewhere else. And that, that you might've just, you know, lost your, your free ride, but unfortunately that's just how it goes. And so there's some uncertainty associated with Space A. And that's why I say one of the most important things about it is understanding when you should and shouldn't use it. So you definitely don't want to use it when you absolutely have to be somewhere by a certain time. So whether that's for a graduation, uh, a birthday, a cruise departure, anything for which you have made a non-refundable reservation, you definitely want to fly commercial in those instances. But if you have some flexibility, a little bit of time, a little bit of a spirit of adventure, that's a good time to use Space Day. Gotcha. Now, um, when, if, you, if you're if you flexible and you get, you're up for the adventure, um, where do you actually go to look to see, like if you fall within that 72 hour window, um, where do you actually mm -hmm. go to check these 
uh, availabilities. Sure. So most schedules, po uh, sorry, most passenger terminals post their schedules online on the Air Mobility Command website. I can send you a link and we'll post this to, I have a step-by-step -step guide to where to find all of the flight schedules. Nice. But in short, each terminal has its own, all of the air, the terminals that fall with on, under Air Mobility Command have their own page. They publish their schedules there and that's where you can see uh, which who's going where and then many terminals also publish what's called a roll call report which shows the departures for the last one to seven days so gotcha. there's definitely patterns in in what bases fly where so for example from travis Air Force base that's where you're going to see the most flights to hawaii and the pacific east coast bases there's some they you know that go up and down the east coast or within the states but that's also the best place to catch hops to Europe. Yeah. So sure. that would be really the first step is, is looking at the flight schedules and understanding which bases fly to the places you want to go. Gotcha. And then you do what they, we call it sign up or you register for the terminals from which you might want to fly sometime within the next 60 days. And that's the 60 days is sort of your, the duration of your virtual, your, the, the virtual late wait list, so to speak. And this, you're not, when you sign up for a terminal, at a terminal, you're not telling them, you're not signing up for a particular flight. You're letting them know, this is my information. I would like to fly from this base sometime within the next 60 days. And so that's the, that's just how you initiate the process to get on the list. Gotcha. And then this is an oversimplification of the rest of the process, but basically when you then, once you're signed up, when you see a flight that you want to, that you hope to take, you go to the terminal within 24 hours of that time listed on the slide, you do what's uh, called marking yourself present, which is sort of like checking in, but it's basically notifying them, I'm here, we are competing for this particular, I want to take this particular flight. Then they go through what's called a roll call, where they, uh, listen, they call out the names they, of the people that are, have made the flight and it's by priority group. Uh, that was something I didn't touch on, but there are six different priority groups. The, uh, the lowest numbered group is the highest priority, which is people traveling on emergency leave. And then it goes on down. Uh, any veterans, whether it's 100% disabled or retirees and also surviving spouses, we're all in category six. So the lowest priority category, which is logical, of course, because yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the rest is for active duty, um, different situations. So gotcha. yeah, during roll call, they'll start with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the highest priority group uh, and, you know, call the people who are in that group, then move on to the next group, call them and so on. So if there's, you know, an entire C5 has empty seats on the upper deck, there's 73 seats probably everybody who signed up is, has a good shot of getting on, but when they only release, you know, a handful of seats, then it can become more competitive. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that was a good point, too. I mean, you brought up the aircraft, you know, C, C, C5, C17, C130s are probably, I imagine, like, I don't, like, I don't think anybody would, I'm sure people know this, but you're obviously not going to be flying anywhere in an F-15 or anything like that. Right, <laughs> um, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, you, you raise a good you raise a good point too because the missions are to and from bases that have like transport aircraft. So if if there's a if there's a fighter base like Fallon or something like that, you're not going to see as many opportunities yeah. from that base because yeah, it's, it's just fighter jets. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, now, also, this is just the one way, right? Like you're not actually getting a round trip ticket, so to speak, right? So it, to come back, you're gonna have to kind of go through this whole same process again, right? Exactly, yeah. yes. So uh, Air Mobility Command has that warning pretty much on every page <laughs> <laughs> that there is no guarantee of round trip transportation. So um, that's the other uncertainty part of it too, is there's not just the concern about getting to your destination as scheduled, but getting back in time for the end of your leave or whatever you know, events you might have going going on back home. So the biggest thing I can say is stay flexible. And that's, uh, I think, our number one strategy for not getting stuck, like yeah. in a foreign country or, you know, where, you know, and having to pay for an overseas flight. So 
we the expression we use is take the first thing smoking. And that means take the first flight that is going to take off and has seats going in the direction of your travel. So if you're at Ramstein Air Base, a lot of people really like those, uh, the rotator, the PE, because it's a regular commercial aircraft. But lots of people like that one and it's and it's, you know, it's comfortable in that respect. But if you're just trying to get back to the United States and you can hop a C5 into Dover, just take it. Yeah. You know, that's then all you have to do is worry about getting from Dover to wherever in the United States you're trying to go. So don't wait around for the perfect flight. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, now that you, now aside from flights, um, you also you mentioned like you do like the wreck stuff and is this is the process kind of similar is it just kind of like you just if the like if you want to rent you know a kayak or you know a boat or whatever it is i mean i don't even know if the military allows boat rentals but yeah they do <laughs> do they really oh wow um is the process a lot i'm assuming it's a lot easier and yes. that's kind of like on a first come first serve and including lodging as well like the hotels and all that stuff yeah every everything but space a flight are kind of like their own beast and everything else is pretty straightforward. So in terms of base lodging, if you're traveling for leisure, you're space A also for that. And each facility has their own policy and how far advanced space A, you can make space A reservations at some locations. It might be just a couple of days and some locations it could be a month. And it can also vary by time of year. So during the summer PCS season, they tend to be A, pretty full and B, they might want to keep those rooms open for families that, you know, come in at the last minute or their orders change at the last minute, those kinds of things. But it's definitely a more straightforward process. Uh, and then same with rentals. There's, in terms of just like a boat rental at a marina, for example, uh, we've rented boats that make Dell Air Force Base. They have a nice mm. marina. There's no particular priority. You just, when they go in and pay for it and whatever they have available. Uh, the recreational facilities, those vary in terms of their policies, in terms of how far in advance you can register. So typically, there might be one window allowed for either active duty members or even people stationed at that base. They might have actually even more priority. So for example, say they can make their reservations a year out, whereas retirees can make them six months out or something like that. Sure. Yeah, so that makes I think sense. Yeah, the key with all of really all of this stuff is flexibility. And then quite honestly, we do a lot of last minute travel. So even at the most popular military recreational facilities, there's always a last minute cancellation. So if you're willing to book your plans, you know, a little bit spur of the moment, you can pretty much get in. Yeah, it's, that's definitely good to know because I think that was one of the biggest reasons why I didn't do it is because I always heard that you had to basically that this is a last minute thing like you could try to plan it and you know obviously with being in the military like you can plan your leave but it's are you going to be able to get into that you know that space a travel or whatever it might be within that sure. a leave that you got approved um which most cases probably not <laughs> but um, right. but that's good to know we we do meet a lot of active duty members flying space day i mean it, it can definitely be done because you're the higher you're in the highest priority groups and it's just it just has to be the right opportunity yeah if you have a, a week of leave and you're trying to you know travel between japan and the states then i wouldn't recommend it but you know if you have a long period of leave that you've built up and you've i mean there's a little bit more to it too in terms of being able to figure out when is a good time for you to to fly because outside of summer pcs season which officially is basically extends from mid-may to early september so it's kind of long and then, of course, during the winter holidays is also a more competitive time. But in general, when schools are in session, that is a much easier time to fly space. A. Just there's just a lot less competition for seats. Gotcha. Um, there was one 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 last thing um, that I don't, I don't think we touched on the cost for space. A. Mm -hmm. Is there yep. associated price cost to this? The cargo missions are free. The only thing that you could possibly need to pay for directly anyway, is if you wanted to purchase a meal, they're available five to $10 at some bases for some flights. That's not always the case. So I always recommend that people bring their own snacks because you just never know. The Patriot Express or Rotator, the Space A passengers pay a per person head tax. 
And the most that it varies by whether you're going from the U.S. to Europe or the, you know, the Europe back to the U.S., but it tops out under $40 per person. So, and then of course your meal is included just like on a, on a commercial flight. I mean, if you're flexible, I guess you can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, there are, there can be some indirect costs, which people have to be aware of. So if you spend a few nights waiting for, a, in lodging, waiting for a flight, and then also local accommodations, those kinds of things, it can add up. So you really need to do some back of the envelope calculations to kind of estimate how much you're likely to save when you fly space A. And obviously if you have multiple people, depending on the size of your family, you know, if you're talking about not paying for four airfares between the US and Europe, that's a huge savings compared to like, if you're a solo traveler and you could find one of those cheap fares for 500 bucks, then, you know, unless you're really looking for the adventure of space, say you might, you might, you know, it's possible if you spend a few nights in lodging on either end that you're not gonna save that much money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so there's definitely some pros and cons, some perks and things like that to consider. So, I mean, it does, just like everything else, you know, it's got the positives, got the negatives and yeah. just got to do your own research, like you said. So um, awesome. Well, uh, this is pretty much it. This has been a lot of great information. Uh, we, we thank you so much for, for being on here today. Uh, where would people go? So I understand you've got a bunch of resources, some great sure. things for people to check out. Where would they go to um, download those or check out some more information? Sure. If you go to my homepage, it's just popandsmoke.com. There's basically three main buckets you'll see when you get to the landing page. So if you click on military space, a flights, you'll find all the information you need. We have a quick start guide that explains the process step by step. Also that uh, explanation of where to find the flight schedules, our recommended packing list, because if you're flying on a cargo plane, you, you want to be sure there's some things you should bring for a comfortable ride. And then, or you can starting back from the homepage, click on military lodging, you get all kinds of information about how to stay space day on bases, details about recreational facilities and that kind of thing. Nice. And for just for clarification, that's P-O-P-P-I-N. So it's not popping smoke, it's popping exactly. smoke. Like you're like, you know, you're popping smoke. So yep. for anybody exactly. needs this clarification on that. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you, Stephanie, so much for taking some time out today. And that is it for this one. And uh, we we appreciate you all tuning in, listening in, and hope you got some value out of this. Go to popandsmoke.com for any more information on space, aid, travel, and recreation. So until the next one, we'll see you. All right. Thanks, Mike.